we're getting into graphing and you should know the following by the end of this um, lecture. So you should be able to graph equations by plotting points. You should be able to find intercepts from a graph. You should be able to find intercepts from an equation. You should know what an intercept is. You should be able to test for symmetry um, with respect to the x-axis, with respect to the y-axis, and with respect to the origin. So looking at a graph, you should see if it's symmetrical or not across those. Or if you're given an equation, you should be able to test to see if the, the graph would be symmetrical across those axes or origin. And then you should also know how to graph key equations. So I mentioned um, before I turned on the video that in this class, we'll be doing a lot of graphing and techniques of graphing. And so knowing what these key um, equations look like will help us in the future when we get into transformations of graphs. And so I have here some of those key graphs that you should be familiar with. So let's just kind of talk of, about them just really quickly. So if you have a constant function, f of x equals two. So f of x is just the function notation, another way of saying y equals two. So if you have an equation of y equals a number and there's no x value in there, then it's just a horizontal line. You have your identity function, f of x equals x. Another way to state that is y equals x. You'll see there that you have this diagonal line that goes through the origin. Absolute value function. So we just dealt with graphing, or not graphing, um, solving absolute value equations and inequalities. These look like a V-shaped graph. You got your quadratic equation, which is your parabola f of x equals x squared. So technically these all should have arrows on them, meaning that they're extending on in that direction. Your cubic function, so f of x equals x cubed. Your square root function, so f of x is equal to the square root of x. You got your cubic function. You got your reciprocal function, f of x equals one over x. So these technically that one over x, it's never gonna touch or cross the x-axis or the y-axis. And then the last one, we have the reciprocal squared function. So one over x squared. Again, this is never going to touch or cross the y or x-axis. So you should just be familiar of what the shapes of those graphs are. So when you go about graphing these, then you know what type of shape you're gonna have. And then again, we'll get into transformations of functions a little bit later in this course. And so knowing what these graphs look like, then with the transformations, it's really easy to graph. Okay, so in front of us are some notes from our publisher that we're just gonna look at and go through as we're going through this material. So one of the simplest ways of graphing equations is just to go through and plot points. So the values are chosen um, for one of the variables and the corresponding variable of the remaining variable is determined by using the equation. These points are said to satisfy the equation because they produce a true statement. So some of your homework might say, is this point a solution to your equation? Or is this a solution to your equation? And you plug in the values. If you get a true statement, then, then it would be a solution. 
Okay, so looking at the first questions, it's just saying graph the equation y equals negative x plus three by completing the following table, plotting the points and connecting the points with a smooth curve called, in this case, this will be a line. I can see that our equation y equals negative x plus three, and this is a linear equation. And so we're gonna get a line when we graph this. So you should be able to probably graph this without having to plot points because this is in slope intercept form. And so you should be able to identify what the slope is and what the y intercept is, but that's the next section. So if you don't remember that, we'll go through that then. Okay, so we're plotting points. So they actually give us the X values to plug in. They plugged in negative two. You're going in there wherever you see an X, you're dropping in negative two. So we have a negative of negative two, which is positive two, and then plus three gives us five. So we have a point negative two, five. So we're gonna plot that. You're going to left two and up five. So the next value that we're plugging in is negative one. So doing that, we have y is equal to negative of negative one, then plus three. So minus a negative, that's a positive. So this is really one plus three, which is four. So we have a point here when X is negative one, we have a Y value of four. So plotting that point going to the left one and up four. So if X is zero, you're just replacing wherever you see X in the equation with zero and then simplifying. So negative zero is just zero plus three is three. And so we have a point at zero, three. Zero, three is considered to be our Y intercept because this is where it is touching the Y axis. It's gonna actually cross the Y axis there. And then plugging in one, wherever you see an X, we're getting Y is equal to negative of one plus three. And so we have the point one. And then negative one plus three is two. So one, two. And the last value, if we plug in two, wherever we saw an X, we have Y is equal to negative and then two plus three. Well, negative two plus three is one. So we have a point at two, one. So for the right two and up one. So those are just five points on the graph that we got, but this graph has infinite number of points and those would be any of the points that fall on the line. So we're connecting the dots and just drawing um, a line through those points and putting arrows on each side of the line. And that denotes that we're going in that direction forever. So reading this statement below, it says in this example, the number of points was chosen for you, which I had stated, you know, we were given the X values. If this weren't true, how would you determine how many points to choose and which points to choose? So it really just depends on what values I would plug in for my variable. I like to plug in zero if it, that's in the domain because that's something that makes it easy and, and simplifies easily. Um, knowing what our shape of our graph is going to look like also could determine how many points I'm gonna choose to plot. For a line, I know it's always gonna be straight. And so two or three points is usually good enough. Usually actually I would do three for a line that way I know that if it did not match up and make a line when I drew, um, connected it, then I know that I did something wrong.
So the next example, it wants us to graph the equation x squared plus three, y equals x squared plus three. Again, it wants us to do this by plotting points. So by completing the following table, plotting the points and connecting the points with a smooth curve called a. So when we're graphing a quadratic, we're gonna get a parabola. We'll go in more details of graphing quadratics later in the future where we'll be able to find what the vertex is by putting it in a certain form. So looking at the following, it gives us our first value, x equals negative two. And they go in there and they plug in negative two wherever they see an x. So one reason why function notation instead of writing y is better is because you can denote what variable you're plugging in there, value for the variable you're plugging in there. So I'm gonna write this as f of x equals x cubed plus three. And so when it asked us to find f of negative one, you wanna go in here wherever you see an x, just get used to plugging in or putting a parentheses wherever you see the x and then go in there and um, plug in the value that they want you to do, in this case, negative one. This will make it easier when we get into functions where we're plugging in expressions instead of numbers. So again, go in wherever you see the X, you're going to put a parentheses and then we're gonna drop in the value. In this case, when X is negative one. So we get negative one cubed is negative one plus three. So we have negative one plus three, which is two. So when I plugged in negative one for X, my Y value that spit out was two. So I have a point at negative one, two. Okay, so let's just plot so far what we have. We had a point at negative two, seven. So left two up seven. We have a point at negative one, two. So left one up two. So now let's go in and plug in zero wherever we see an X. So I'm looking at finding f of zero. So again, just putting in parentheses wherever I see an x. So parentheses cubed plus three. Now, if we plug in zero inside that parentheses, we get zero cubed, which is zero plus three is three. So when x is zero, my y value is three. So we have a point at zero three. Okay, so now going in and we're plugging in one wherever we see an X. So we have parentheses cubed plus three. Plugging in one inside the parentheses, we have one cubed, which is one, one plus three gives us back four. So when X was one, Y was four. So we have a point here at one, four. Okay, one more point. So when X is two, We're putting parentheses cubed plus three. We have two cubed. Two cubed is eight. Two times two is four times two is eight. And then eight plus three gives us this 11. So when X was two, Y is 11. Okay, so looking at this, this is a parabola shape. And so I know that this has to be a U shape. It doesn't look great. Okay. 
Okay, so it looks similar to this. And I'm not exactly sure if that um, point there at negative one, two is the vertex or not. This is where it's hard to know where the vertex is without having it in vertex form. Something's off and I, I now know what it is. So you guys just need to make sure that you're copying down the right equation. This was not x cubed plus three, this is x squared. plus three. So I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna change my square, that to a squared. So this was x squared. Which changes all our y values most likely. I knew what my shape of my graph was supposed to look like. So that was part of the reason I knew something was off. So that was another reason why knowing the shapes of your graphs are, is important. We still have a point at negative two seven, but if we go back in and we plug in negative one for X, we get negative one squared is one. One plus three gives me four. So I have a point at negative one, four. So going to the left one and up four. Plugging in zero wherever you see an X, you got zero squared plus three, which is zero plus three, which is three. Plugging in a one for X, we get one squared, which is one, and one plus three gives us four. So going to the right one and up four. And then we have two squared, which is four. Four plus three gives us seven. So when X is two, Y is seven. So go to the right two and up seven. This looks much better. So I apologize about that, but that actually kind of reiterated why I told you guys you really need to be um, know what the shapes are like. And so knowing that, you know, something is wrong if it is not looking correctly. Um, and then also knowing a little bit more about where the vertex is. I knew something was off. I couldn't get a point below zero three where my vertex was. So going back and then figuring out where your error is, is always is something helpful to be able to do. So the next thing that we're gonna look at are intercepts. So when we're finding intercepts, x-intercepts or y-intercepts, we're looking at where is the graph touching or crossing the x-axis or the y-axis. So for the x-intercept, Let's see if I can type this in here. One big. So X intercepts. You might have more than one X intercept at graphing polynomials later on. Um, where we have multiple x-intercepts. So x-intercepts is where the graph crosses or touches the x-axis. So a point where we're crossing or touching the x-axis, your y value is always zero. So if you're given the equation and you want to find the x-intercept, you're going to let y equals zero and solve for x. So let y equals zero and solve for x. 
So if we're looking at the y-intercept, or intercepts, um, this is where the graph crosses or touches. The y-axis. So when you're looking at the y-axis, your value of x is always zero. And so if you're given an equation and you want to find the y-intercept or intercepts, you're going to let x equal zero and solve for y. So let's look at where you're given a graph and you have to find where the x and the y intercepts are. So looking at the graph, um, you want to find the x intercepts and the y intercepts. So let's just go through and first find the x intercepts. And so we're looking at places where the graph is touching or crossing the x axis. And so we have a point here at negative three, zero. We have a point here at, it tells me it's three halves, zero, or 1.50. And then we also have a point here at 4.50. So our x-intercepts are negative 3, 3 halves, and 4.5. Looking at our y-intercepts, we're crossing at 0, 3. We're crossing here at zero, negative four thirds. And we're also crossing at zero, negative 3.5. So our y-intercepts we see are three, negative four thirds and negative 3.5. And so now we have a graph of an equation of a line um, and it wants us to find out what the intercepts are. And so looking at it, this is crossing here at negative two zero. And then it's crossing the y axis when x is zero, y is one. So x intercept in this case is negative two and the y intercept in this case is one. So finding the intercepts given an equation is really helpful when you're going through and graphing your equations. So in this example, we're given the equation and we want to find the intercepts. And by finding the intercepts, then we can graph this. And so remember again, the y-intercept We're gonna let x equals zero and solve for y. So going in here, I have two x minus three, but I'm gonna replace y with zero. So I'm gonna put parentheses where y is equals six. So simplifying, I get two X, well, negative three times zero is zero. So I'm not gonna write anything, is equal to six. Get X by itself, it's two times X. So to undo multiplication, we're gonna divide both sides by two. And so we get that X is equal to three. So we have a point here, um, zero, three. Uh, what did I just do? I just found the x-intercept. Because I had just let y equals zero. Uh,
So to find the y x-intercept, you're going to let y equal 0 and solve for x, which we just did. So we have the point here, 3, 0. So the y-intercept now. We're going to let x equal 0 and solve for y. So I have 2, plugging in uh, parentheses for x, minus 3 times y is equal to 6. So I have 2 times 0 is 0, negative 3y equals 6. Divide through by negative 3 to get, six, um, to get y by itself. So 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. So we have a y-intercept when x was 0. Y is negative two. So for lines, I tend to like to um, at least do one more point just to make sure that this matches up. So we could plug any value in for X and solve for Y or plug any value in for Y and solve for X other than zero in this case because of the values that we have. So for instance, if we let y equals 1, we would have 2x minus 3 all times y is 1 is equal to 6. So we have 2x minus 3 equals 6. Let's get x by itself. So adding 3 to both sides of the equation, we get 2x is equal to 9. Divide by 2, we get x equals 9 halves. So x is 4.5. So we have a point here when x is 4.5, my y value is 1, which looking at my points, it looks like if I draw a line through my points that this is aligned. It's straight. So hopefully my math then is correct and that is my graph of that. So finding intercepts are helpful for graphing, but also seeing if the graph is symmetrical across the x-axis, the y-axis, or the origin is also helpful for graphing because if it's symmetrical, if we know one point, then we know another point. And let's go through how to test for symmetry. So it states another tool for graphing equations is to check whether a graph of the equation has symmetry. There are three types of symmetry to look for. We say that a graph is symmetrical to the x-axis if for every x, y on the graph, the point blank is also on the graph. Okay, well, let's think about this. If it's symmetrical with the x-axis, so let's say I had some value here, A, B, and that was a point on the graph. If it was symmetrical with the x-axis, if we folded our graph along this x-axis, we would have a point down here. Well, my x value is still the same, right? It's my y value that's changed. My y value is now the negative b. And so if we have x, y as a point on the graph and it's symmetrical to the x-axis, then x negative y is also a point on the graph. So similarly, we can kind of figure out the point that would be on the graph if we were symmetrical to the y-axis. So a graph is said to be symmetric to, um, with respect to the y-axis, if for every point x, y on the graph, then the point blank is also on the graph. Okay, well, let's look at our point a, b. And instead, if we took that um, and we folded 
our paper along the y-axis, then this point over here from A, B, that's symmetrical, is right here. So my y value is staying the same. It's my x value that's changing, and that would be negative A, B. So my x value is going to be negative, and my y value is going to stay the same. If it's symmetrical with the origin, so if we're thinking about it as folding papers and where that point would lay, if it was symmetrical, you would be folding it in quarters, so across the x-axis and the y-axis. So a point is said to be symmetrical with the origin if every point x, y on the graph, the point blank is also on the graph. So this point here, a, b, if I folded my paper along the x-axis, it would be down here, but then the y-axis, it would be right here. And so both my x and my y values are changing for it to be symmetrical with the origin. And so I would have negative x and negative y would also be a point on my graph. Symmetry with respect to the origin, the same thing is being symmetric both to the x-axis and y-axis. So the graphs on the following. So if you look at that first graph, notice that it's symmetrical with the x-axis. So for every point here, x sub one, y sub one, the y value changed. x sub one, negative y sub one. x sub two, y sub two is now x sub two, negative y sub two. X sub three, Y sub three is now X sub three, negative Y sub three. So those also are points on the graph. If you folded your paper along the X axis, it would be symmetrical. The next example is an example where it's symmetrical with the Y axis. So if you're looking here at X sub one, Y sub one, your y value is the same, but your x value is negative, negative x sub one, y sub one. Or if I think of it here, negative x sub two, y sub two, symmetrical, my x value changes, so now it's positive x sub two, y sub two. If we folded our paper along the y-axis, our graph is symmetrical, it's a mirror image. And then the last case scenario is a picture of something symmetrical across the origin. And so we're just changing the sign of both the X and the Y value. So this negative X of one, Y sub one also has the point X of one, Y sub one on the graph. Or if I think of X of two, Y sub two, changing the signs, negative X of two, Y sub two is also on the graph. Our next example, instead of a graph, we're given an equation and we wanna find the intercepts and we wanna test for symmetry. So recall to find the x-intercept, we let y equals zero. So let's go in there and let's find the x-intercept. So if we let y equals zero, we would have zero is equal to x squared minus nine all over x squared plus two. So find the x-intercept here. So we have an equation. Um, we can clear our fraction, right, by multiplying through by our denominator x squared plus two on both sides of the equation. Getting rid of our denominator, um, zero times anything is zero, so we're left with zero is equal to x squared minus nine. So now we want to solve for x here. You have a lot of 
tools in your toolbox of doing this, right? We learned how to factor. Um, you can factor it. You could use the square root method in this case, because you have a perfect square in there. You could use the quadratic formula. We can complete the square. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. So I noticed that that's a difference of two squares. And so I can factor this as x minus three, x plus three. So now we can just set each factor equal to zero. So I have x minus three equals zero. That would be when x is positive three. And I have x plus three equals zero. And so this would be when x is negative three. So we have two points for our x-intercepts. I'm just going to put them here, 3, 0, and negative 3, 0. To find the y-intercept, y-intercept is usually the easier one to find. You're letting x equals 0. So if we go back into this equation, and wherever we see an x, we put a parenthesis. So we have y equals parenthesis squared minus nine all over parentheses squared plus two. So dropping in zero inside the parentheses, we get zero squared minus nine. So we get y is equal to negative nine all over zero squared plus two is two. So this is negative nine halves or the same thing as negative 4.5. So my y-intercept is 0, negative 4.5. So to test for symmetry across the x axis, well, that changes y to negative y. And we want to simplify. So if I can plug in negative y for y, and I get back the same equation once I simplify, then I know that it's symmetrical to the x-axis. So I have negative y is equal to x squared minus nine all over x squared plus two. So if I solve for y here, I get rid of the negative in front of the y. I could multiply both sides of my equation by negative one. But if I do that, I get y is equal to, we're only multiplying either the numerator by negative one or the denominator, but not both. So if I distribute my negative inside the parentheses for my numerator, I would get negative x squared plus nine all over x squared plus two. So if this was the exact same equation that I started with, then it would be symmetrical with the x-axis. Since plugging in negative y for y does not give me the same equation, this is not symmetrical. To the y-axis. Okay, so to test for symmetry with the y-axis, you're plugging in negative x. Um, you're replacing x with negative x. And you're simplifying. So if I go in here, put parentheses wherever I saw an x and replace it with negative x. So I'm going to just go in and put parentheses wherever I see an x. So y is equal to parentheses squared minus 9, parentheses squared plus 2. Replacing that with a negative x. Well, negative x times negative x is actually positive x squared. So I have positive x squared minus 9. All over again, negative x quantity squared is positive x squared plus 2. This is the same equation as we started with. So this tells me it is symmetrical with the y-axis. Well, 
And I just noticed up here, I should have said this is not symmetrical with the X axis. And then to test for symmetry across the origin, you're replacing um, X with negative X and you're replacing Y with negative Y. If we get something that is unchanged when we simplify, then it's symmetrical with the origin. I can already see that that's not gonna be the case. If I plug in negative X for X, I would get the same thing, but that negative Y for Y doesn't give me the same thing. So it's not symmetrical with the origin. So it wanted us to put some pieces, these pieces together to help us graph this equation. So looking at our x-intercepts, we had x-intercepts at negative three, three. We had a y-intercept at positive three, zero. And we had a y-intercept at negative 4.5. And then we know that it's symmetrical with the y-axis which you can see just with our x-intercepts, if those weren't symmetrical, there would be something wrong. Okay. And so actually just says, use a graphing device to confirm your results. So it actually isn't even asking us to graph this. So let's pull up a graphing device to show that what we got is true. So I just plugged in the equation into Desmos and notice that we get our y-intercepts that we found, negative three, zero. I'm sorry, x-intercepts, negative three, zero and three, zero. And the y-intercept was zero, negative 4.5. We saw that this was symmetrical with a y-axis, which looking at the graph, you can see that it is. So we'll have more tools of of graphing this a little bit later in this course, and then more so once you take calculus. Okay, so one more looking at what we just learned. So if you're given the equation y is equal to the cubed root of x by doing any of the following. So we wanna graph this by finding our intercepts. We wanna graph it by um, testing for symmetry and plotting some points. Okay, so x-intercept. Let y equal zero. So if we let y equal zero, we would have zero is equal to the cubed root of x. So we wanna solve for x here, um, just bec because we were looking at solving equations with radicals um, before, we could raise both sides in this case by the third power. So the third root of x cubed is just gonna be x is equal to and zero cubed is zero. Okay, so we have an x-intercept and y-intercept at the point zero, zero. You would see that also if you had looked for the x y-intercept and you had let x equal zero. Right, because you would get zero is equal to the cubed root replacing x with zero. Cubed root of zero is also zero. So testing for symmetry. If we um, 
let's plug in negative y for y. I get negative y is equal to the cubed root of x. Well, if I multiply both sides by negative one, I get y is equal to negative cubed root of x. This is not the same equation, so it's not symmetrical. to the x-axis. If we plug in negative x for x, we get y is equal to the cubed root of negative x. Remember with radicals, we can break this down this is the same thing as a cubed root of negative one times the cubed root of x. Well, there is a number I can cube to get negative one and that's negative one. So this is the same thing as negative one or just negative cubed root of x. So notice if we plug in negative x for x and negative y for y, we are going to get the same equation. That we originally started with, we would have negative y is equal to the cubed root of negative x. If we multiply both sides of our equation by negative one, we would get y is equal to the negative of the cubed root of negative x, but we can pull out that cubed root of negative one, which is negative one, and we have negative of negative one, which is actually positive, one times the cubed root of x. So this is symmetrical to the origin. So this tells me if I find one point in here, the negative, if I find some point x, y, then the negative x, negative y is also a point. And so if we go in and we just plot a couple of values, well, we know when x is zero, y was zero. If we plug in one for x, we get the cubed root of one. Well, one, I can cube one to get one. So one would be y. But because it's symmetrical to the origin, we also know negative one, negative one is a point. When I plug in a value for x, I'm going to think of something that I could find the cubed root of. So if I look at eight, cubed root of eight, I can cube two to get eight. So the cubed root of eight is two. But because this is symmetrical with the origin, that tells me that negative eight, negative two is also a point. And so from there, we can plot some points, 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 8, 2, and negative 8, negative 2. And so we get our graph that looks like this.